today that's my biggest regret but before I introduce you to our very interesting um, guest who has crossed over from pop to classical who is wearing so many hats aside from being artistic director for the CCP he also is a dean at the University of Santa Tomas he has so many achievements but before that she said that she wished there was a piano here because for the full hour she wouldn't get tired of listening to him play. Yes, and she said that he never fails to bring the house down. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Raul Sunika. Hi! Hello! Good evening, Good evening. Thank you for being with us here tonight. Thank you for the opportunity. Sure. I've asked him a long time is, ago. Is to your guess. piano on its way? <laughs> well, <laughs> Unfortunately, your door is too narrow. Yeah! Okay, what is your favorite kind of piano? Uh, for classical performers, uh, well, there's the Steinway, that's the German-made piano. Mm -hmm. It has been traditionally the number one piano for, for us. No? How but, much do uh, they go for yes, these days? The range. Well, a full grand would cost uh, equivalently about 10 million pesos. Wow! Really? Whoa, what, okay. which piano do you have at home? That one. <laughs> Don't be shy. No, I'm not that rich. <laughs> but I have a Steinway, uh, which I bought uh, a used one, and it's uh, about seven feet. I have another full grand. Uh, so, what, that's seven called, feet? Uh, the concert grand, the, the full size grand, is nine feet long. Okay. Actually, we, you measure it from the keyboard to the tip. It's really uh, wow. longitude, not latitude. Yes. I, I have a uh, seven-foot piano, that's a Steinway also, and uh, one Baldwin concert grand, that's the nine-foot one. Baldwin is an American brand. Well, one is in my apartment. I have a condo and... Oh, and love to be his neighbor. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> no, I would open all the windows. Yeah, I would totally like, just put... Never mind the firewall. Maybe yeah. uh, you would have second thoughts if you were my neighbor and I keep practicing. Because no, when I used to I live in New listen. York, yeah. uh, actually, there were some neighbors who complained. Ay, ingit lang sila. <laughs> no, because That's what we say. Americans just complain about everything. Yeah. Nothing to do with your piano playing. So, are there any um, Filipino-made pianos that are as good as each German-made ones? Well, uh, years ago when I was young, mm -hmm. of course, that was younger. more than that, a few yeah, years ago. Like years ago. <laughs> was younger. There was a piano, the, uh, a local piano, but with a German-sounding name. I, I will not Mention say the it name. Mention it. Tago na lang natin sa pangalan. Stein Beck. Stein something. Stein Beck. Okay. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, the quality has not really lived up to the Western mm -hmm. pianos. Have you spoken to any of the manufacturers here um, about what they can do to like upgrade their quality? Well, most of the piano dealers here import like Steinways or Yamahas, you know, mm -hmm. Japanese-made pianos. So they're mainly franchise dealers or local manufacturers. But the major parts, or at least the uh, the technical expertise in making the particular brand of piano, is still imported from the original source, which is abroad. You mentioned you lived when you lived in New York. When did you live there, and how long for? I was sent there by Mrs. Marcos as a scholar of the Young Artists Foundation of the Philippines wow. in 1975. Great. And uh, I came back here 2002. And That's you a long in time. I know, right? Well, it was not like I was there for 27 straight years. I, okay, uh, of course, kept coming home to per, to perform, perform here. and uh, or give some master classes. Mm -hmm. So uh, during the last 10 years of my New York stay, 
I was coming home at an average of like three times a year. Mm -hmm. So when I finally moved here in 2002, there was really no need to adjust. Mm -hmm. so, so how did you actually start? I mean, how old were you? Like, were you, were you like, you know, some people there, what, in grade school and they already started, started taking piano, piano lessons as young as like five or six? Yeah, exactly. That was the age that I started. I started at the age of five. Uh, simultaneous long, with my kindergarten. Your parents? parents made you study piano? No, it was... Uh, or did you have a toy piano? Or? Well, you know, during my time, which was, of course, is uh, not your generation. Uh, well, you might be in Manila, <laughs> <laughs> in Manila, it was like a uh, household furniture. Uh -huh. Oh, well, like we all do have pianos in our... Yes, yeah, yes, we yes. all have pianos. Well, there used to be like a piano in every household, I well, think. Well, I still have a piano, still, yeah. but our neighbor had a piano. <laughs> oh, you didn't have one? I had no. one. I wanted one for so long. Our neighbor yeah, well, well, nowadays, since the piano is too costly, especially with the, with the living costs now, yes. uh, not every household now will, can afford to buy mm -hmm. one. Uh, before, I guess pianos were more affordable. Yes. It's either that or I guess people were a little bit uh, more money than now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, it was also customary for the children to take, take piano, piano lessons, lessons yeah. as oh. if it were a part of everyday schooling. And that was what we had. Now, in my case, we lived with my grandmother, yes. my, my father's family, which was us, and my uncle's family also. So we stayed under one roof. And my older cousins uh, started taking piano lessons. I don't know wh where, if they were pushed or whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, as their playmates, I wanted to do what they did. So I said, ako din, you know, when they started. So it was really just a matter of uh, following the leader, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, gradually, as our teacher presented us in student recitals, I got to enjoy performing, I guess. And, when did uh, you know, though? At what age did you know that you had this gift? Uh, well, when I was in third year high school, I thought of uh, continuing with my piano uh, towards a music degree, but not necessarily a career. So I told my parents that I wanted to study, to take piano as a college degree, and later on, the real one that I wanted to take, but which was mathematics. How, oh, which math. was? Math. Mathematics. mathematics. How did they react? Oh, they were all for it. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents never showed any resistance to whatever choice I would make. So in college, I took uh, music first, and after I finished it, I went to math. Where did you take music? At the University of the Philippines. I see. Uh -huh. yeah. UP and you teach in UST. Yes. <laughs> that's what we call crossover. Crossover, crossover. yeah. See, that's crossover not only in schools, mm -hmm. but also with the kind of music pieces he yes, plays. Yes. But you mean you didn't take piano as a kid? No, no, no. But my cousins did. Are you kidding? Like so every, I would sit down during, I yeah, during, during music class and um, like a few of the students in our class would walk going to their music class, well, their piano lessons. And I remember exactly who would leave and take piano lessons. Even until today, I remember the name of the teacher. But I didn't feel that it was something that I wanted to do. I mean, we have a piano at home now and my daddy is taking lessons, I mean, when he has time. See, but um, they, they were actually better in music. I mean, they could read notes and it was, you know, learning music was easier for them. But they were only like five out of maybe 45, maybe one-tenth mm -hmm. would take piano lessons. With us, every kid I know and all my classmates, we all were made to take piano and really? ballet. It's because we were made to take piano that I didn't really enjoy it because I preferred ballet. But um, uh, maybe also I didn't have a great teacher because my teacher would be like telling me to do something and looking back at my mom, ma pong, ma jong. You know, she re really wasn't focusing because I feel if I had a better teacher, then uh -huh. I would have been good because now for the past 10 years, I've been wanting to take piano lessons again. Really? I've had this like burning desire to, to go back. In fact, I've been asking around how much or lesson can I go. I only have a keyboard now here because yeah. I live in the flat. Do you have time? Well, I will make, the, the, okay, piano, learning how to play the piano, I'm not going to put that thought away because I think I'd still want to get into it and I still have a lot of years yeah, to go. Yeah, well, well, my dad, so, see? Yeah, so. When he has more time. Well, let me tell you that uh, actually you can resume your lessons. Uh, there's no age gap really or age barrier. Mm -hmm. uh, my oldest uh, student, uh, well, the, oh, you actually teach? she, yes, I do teach now. But before, even before, even when I used to live in New York, every time I would come home, 
there would be a lady that would uh, take lessons with, with, with me. Of course, yeah. she was already a music graduate, but she needed further coaching. Mm-hmm. And at the age of 95, she Wait, gave a solo concert here. <laughs> So concert at the age of 95. So you have, you have a few years to go. More than a few years to go. A few go. years to go. Until <laughs> we're like yeah, like mga two years. My question <laughs> is, like, for example, we're not really good in reading notes. We're not like spot readers and it takes us time to... Um, is there a different... There are all these systems that come up, you know, that's advancements and science yes. technologies. Is there an yeah, well, easier way to learn how to play the piano now? There is a shorter way, but uh, the long-term benefit, of course, is not there. You know. So which we, is the shorter way? Chords? Chords are, yes, but if you want okay. to can play explain, classical music. Yeah, can you explain that? The shorter yes, uh, way. The shorter way, you know, playing chords, actually it's a way to, to sort of uh, play with improvisation. Mm-hmm. Like and the guitar. The like chords. the guitar, you, you know, chords are a combination of notes that you play together. Okay. So sometimes you just want to play a popular piece, right. mm-hmm. but if you play only the melody, it would sound bare. So you want to decorate it mm-hmm. or to, to ornament it with, with something which we call chords to make it sound more full, right? Yes. So, the, like guitar chords, well, piano chords can also be taught to you. Of course, as with anything, it takes time. It takes a little of your time to master this chord so that you don't have to think every time you have to change the chord, how do I do this, you know, just for the continuity of the music. However, if you want to learn classical music, unfortunately or fortunately, it is more exacting. You have to play the notes as they are written on paper. So along with the notes, they have to find out how how they are counted, yeah. exactly, rhythm. And as you get to a higher level, you get to learn about dynamic changes, like how loud, how soft, whether you go faster or slower. And then you have the balance, the quality of the sound, the interpretation, the style of the composer. There are many things actually which the listener cannot readily see. It's just like uh, looking at a tennis match. For example, you watch, uh, say, Pete Sampras or Roger Federer. Mm -hmm. It looks so easy. But what we don't see or what we don't know are the hours that they put in there. Mm -hmm. So it's similar, I guess, when you see a pianist or a violinist or even a singer perform on stage, especially if they are playing effortlessly, you think that it's so easy. But actually, it is not because we have to put endless hours mm-hmm. enable, to enable us to perform with ease and with uh, a certain degree of spontaneity. Is this the first time you're guesting on a TV show without a piano? No, actually, I've been fortunate that most of the TV shows I've been in don't have pianos. Oh, you, he what? means he's fortunate, meaning you don't really no. like yeah, it. We're just, so no, unfortunate. Yeah, we're so unfortunate. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding you, of course. No, we're fortunate if, to have if there you, were a piano, but I mean. it's very unfortunate. The first thing I thought of, oh, maybe we can put a piano, but I if know. it's not this caliber, never mind, right? <laughs> you know, um, there was this lady who, um, well, she taped in a cassette before in the salon, and she taped all these piano hits. And... Um, my friend gave me one, and I really liked it. I mean, all these classical, you know, uh, things, uh, themes from movies, and I really, really, really enjoyed. It. And I wanted to buy some more, but then she had passed away. But I remember that so well, and and I used to play it. And I, I was so young. I think I was I was in high school and then college. But I really enjoyed listening to the piano. Okay, so f- say somebody for me who's really a beginner, and I want to take piano lessons, like. How, what would I start with? So here's the piano. I mean, what's the first thing, let's say, the first lesson I would have? Well, in my encounters with people who wanted to learn how to play the piano fast and they don't really aspire to be concert performers. Yeah, okay, no, that's no. Us. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. us. Fast and not, yeah. yeah. Well, it's universal that one has to learn how to read notes, even if it's on a slow pace. No slow matter pace. what, you gotta yes. read the notes. Right? Because even if you learn popular music, Popular music is still written with notes, even if it's just yes. the melody. And when you learn chords, you also deal with notes. So there is no, there is no escaping the basics. Really. So really read the notes. You really have to read notes. It's and hard. I mean, it's usually the right hand is easier to play. The left is always complicated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, and then you, you'll teach me how, you know, to move my fingers. And yes, because uh, there is some degree of coordination that we need. Coordination, yeah. flexibility. Flexibility is so important. My fingers cannot reach. Ah, okay. I can't tickle the ivory. So, so um, do you think that like you wanted to take math, and took math you after. are yes, uh, you took math after as a second? So, do you think there is a, you know a, 
a connection between being good in math and being good in music? Well, people have asked me this uh, countless times, and what I tell them is that although there is really no connection, I think, between music and math, still uh, one helps the other. For example, I think my mathematical background uh, helps me think more systematically in a more organized way, and definitely it has helped me in my memorization. Uh -huh. Right. I still teach uh, statistics up to this day. Oh, are you serious? serious? So, okay, what subjects right now do you teach aside from statistics? Well, I teach piano and statistics. That's all I can teach because piano of piano and statistics. How many classes do you have a week? Well, I have one statistics uh, section. How? And then I have all, about all, 15 students. Oh, this is a basic uh, statistics course. So, first year? First year college? Well, it's actually a fourth year.